Assalamu alaikum. So just a few days ago, I got a message from a young guy uh, who lives uh, not too far away from me. This is what he said. Uh, send me a message on WhatsApp. He says, Salam, quick question. Is it permissible to do tayammum at work if there's no wudu facilities? For example, in an inadequate space and privacy to do wudu. So to find out uh, how this conversation uh, went on, keep watching. But before I get to that, uh, just want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. And I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel, uh, share it with others, and inshallah help uh, more and more people uh, benefit from uh, my content on especially prayer, salah, uh, revelation, the Quran, and uh, leadership. Right, so back to this uh, conversation. So I replied uh, pretty bluntly because, you know, we know each other for some time. I said, Wa alaikum as -salam. you don't need privacy. So th note that, that was the first thing he said. Is it permissible to do tayammum at work if there's no wudu facilities, i.e. inadequate space and, and, and inadequate privacy to do wudu? So who said that we need privacy to do wudu? Now, obviously, for a lady, that situation may, dip, may well differ. But generally, for guys, we don't need privacy to do wudu because in doing wudu, we're not revealing any part of ourselves uh, that, you know, is a problem for anyone else to for, for anyone else to see. What goes on, what is behind this question is the shyness that one feels from possibly being seen to be doing wudu, which is a key thing and many of us face. So then I said, continue, I continue. I said, a basic sink is enough space. Uh, and then perhaps, and obviously there are differing views on this, uh, I was saying that if it helps, you can wear like you no know, slightly thicker socks uh, after doing wudu in the morning, you know, when leaving from home and then uh, wipe your socks. Okay, so I'm not getting, getting into a sock wiping thing. That's maybe for another time. So he said, hmm. H M M M M M, right? And then he goes, by privacy, I mean it could implicate me at work if people have an issue with it. So interesting. So basically, now what he's revealing is the fact that somehow there's this tension potentially that he's thinking that may result if he is seen to be or known to be doing will do this uh, strange action. You know that uh, uses uh, uses a well fair amount of water relative to obviously somebody just normally washing their hands. And then he's asking, under what circumstances, if any, would the yamum at work be acceptable? So I said, uh, responding to this fear type issue, if you like, I said, what kind of issue would they have with it? Meaning your colleagues. I said, you be you. Don't be afraid. Let them learn. Educate them. And if you are harassed, then there must be avenues for you to deal with that. Uh, he said he just started at a new firm with another brother. We're the only Muslims here. Quite frankly, they frown upon us even when we pray. Uh, so... Uh, then I went into, well, which firm is it? And we had some other discussions, okay? Um, so very interesting, This I just want to elaborate on this because this is like a really common sort of question and scenario. Is it not the case, and perhaps you've done this, that when you are, for example, I don't know, you could be anywhere. You might be in a, in a restaurant or a shopping center or at work or wherever it may be in some public space. When you want to do your door, what's the first thing you do oftentimes? Look for the disabled toilet. You know, I always had a huge problem with this, you know, why are we looking for the disabled toilet, which is basically, and why do we do that? Because it's like a single self-contained unit, yeah, that has a toilet sink and everything else, so that no one else will see us doing wudu. Now, first of all, in most disabled toilets, I don't know why this is the case, but the sinks are ridiculously small, yeah? So the point is, you're going to be making a complete splash everywhere anyway. So from that perspective, it's not a great idea. But secondly, seriously, what is the problem that we have in doing wudu in a normal setting, right? In just a normal, in the normal thing. Like if we just need to use a bathroom, wash our hands, then we can be seen to be with everybody else. But now we need to do wudu. We just like, we're even afraid to be seen to be doing wudu. This is a real problem. First of all, it speaks to a problem of self-esteem or lack of self-esteem and self-confidence. There's absolutely no reason why we cannot do our wudu confidently without disturbing anybody else. Now, the fact that it is a strange action, if you like, for an onlooker who might think, what is this person doing? Why are they washing up to their elbows, all of a sudden wiping their head, potentially then even like either, frankly, whether we wash our foot in the sink, the classic sort of foot in sink sort of mo moment as if it's like, you know, we you know generally have caught red handed, you know, and then but we have no caught wet footed, <laughs> you know, it's like like some crime we're committing. Right. Or even wiping, you know, like socks either way. You know, it looks it looks or feels uh, odd to be in, in public with others. Now, look, this is where it comes to really turn to a fundamental issue, which is that, again, as believers, forgetting what a major part or a major function uh, or responsibility that, that we have in life and in society. 
which is for the very prayer that we are hoping to pray to be understood and hopefully prayed by more people around us. You know, this is not something which we are doing as an act of worship, which is simply, you know, ju it's just for us. Prayer is for, you know, human beings. You know, God and service and worship of God is for human beings. And so how are the people around us ever going to know and ever going to find out if we ourselves, you know, are shy from even being seen to be doing wudu? People will never know. In fact, the number of the number of people, there literally probably are thousands of people, you know, in our sort of communities and countries where we live who have never seen a wudu when they could have if we had simply like just I've been happy just to do it normally wherever wherever we are and the fact that we don't ask for that same privacy if for example if we're doing we'll do in a masjid then we know we're happy with the next person the next person usually you know there's all like splish splash and it's going all over the place and stuff right that's fine we're okay with that why because this person will understand we're doing the same thing we're here for a similar purpose but you know it's 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 prophetic uh, practice even to just pray out in you know in the open where you can be seen by anyone and everybody let alone doing the wudu so i really think this is an important idea an important principle and for us to develop the self confidence why as it why is it and this actually paraphrases a sentiment expressed by ibrahim alayhi salam abraham in the quran in the in the 6th chapter in surah al-an'am which is basically like why are we afraid how can we be more afraid to be seen to be doing wudu than people are of defying their Lord in the first place, not submitting to him and not praying themselves. Like, why do we have that greater fear? And so actually out of empathy for others, even if we feel that, it, that, that they have some tensions or otherwise, we should, we are not doing anything that is disturbing anybody else. And so be confident, offer your wudu, be conscious of your Lord, and, and frankly, partly intending that this should be seen, or if it is seen, that that's a good thing because you're hoping that it um, might initiate a conversation, for example, which is a positive thing. At least someone at the very minimal will understand okay, and appreciate what this is about. To be, a pre to, to, be, to be known as people who pray and who wash ourselves, uh, if you like, uh, as part of the preparation and as part of the, um, uh, as part of the respect uh, or, uh, you know, that we show in preparation for the Salah, this is something beautiful. We appreciate it as something beautiful and we should make that known. We don't have to be proact overtly proactive, but we shouldn't also deliberately hide away. Now, of course, to move on to another thing, if in the workplace or what have you, there are sort of tensions and all the rest of it, frankly speaking, there are, you know, many um, protections that all, uh, you know, I, and I don't like to necessarily use this term when we're talking about our situation, but let's just say, you know, there are protections for all kinds of, you know, what they call protected characteristics, minorities, whatever it is. Like, you know, you're, you have the right okay, to offer your prayer, you know, in your workplace. That's not something which anyone can or should be taking away from you. So typically, and in most people's circumstances or situations, when they share that with their line manager or team members or whoever, they typically get supported. You know, I remember actually when I used to uh, work in the finance industry years ago, um, you know, me offering my prayer, was sometimes sometimes uh, you know uh, so the my uh, team member or my manager uh, when they knew I was uh, normally I would be leaving for Juma at a certain time but maybe I was quickly trying to finish some work off before going they would say to me hang on a second don't you need to go for Juma like well don't well they wouldn't say that but don't you need to go for prayers right that's a Friday <laughs> but you know get out of here go and do your prayers <laughs> so oftentimes I mean that's, I've had generally a positive experience but oftentimes you know like you you will find that level of support and a lot of people and Muslims in workplaces have experienced that. It really just takes us to be confident, you know, and think about any other phenomenon nowadays that has become normal in the minds and hearts of people that wasn't such 10 years ago, 20 years ago, even. Yeah, all sorts of things. Um, social and cultural kind of phenomena, let's say. The principal reason as to why they are normal for people today is because of the confidence of the people who, for example, are adopting a particular way of life or they have a narrative around it or what have you. And we as believers should be the most confident people, but without being arrogant, abrasive, or, you know, um, belligerent in any way. That's not the intention. But to be confident about who we are, to maintain a desire that others should also find this truth and the beauty of what we have, and maybe pray alongside us one day, should drive us and make us uh, make us uh, confident to, um, uh, to, 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 to continue and not to steal away 
uh, when it comes to these things. So I hope that helps you in your particular scenario, in your situation, whatever that may be. And may Allah help us all become confident uh, and become people who uh, purify ourselves uh, fully uh, and properly uh, before each of our prayers and make the prayers themselves a reason why we should have much more uh, confidence. So if we combine that confidence with good character, inshallah, this is a winning formula, not just for us, but for, uh, you know, for our engagement with, uh, with wider society. All right, until next time, take care. Assalamu alaikum. How did you find that? I hope it was useful. If so, hit the like button, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.